Hi everyone, I'm Liz Brown Swanson and welcome to RPV City Talk. I'm here with the mayor of Rancho Palos Verdes, Mayor Jerry Dehovic. So great to have you here every month. The mayor's here bringing all of us up to speed. And this show is definitely for me bittersweet because in fact, this is our last show together. This is it. Which happens at the end of every year. This is our year in review show, but you are also termed out, you and Mar you and Susan Brooks. That is true. Are stepping down from the council. Eight years of service, I can't thank you enough. Well, thank you, Liz. I very much appreciate that. And I very much enjoyed, as I've always told you, doing these shows with you. I think they're, uh, they're terrific and a great community service and people really enjoy hearing what's going on in the city. Are you ready to pass the baton on? It'll be the reorganization meeting on December 3rd, or should I say, pass that massive gavel the mallet, on to the- gavel, yeah. that's right. Yeah, that was something that I started many moons ago and I, that's a nice little tradition and it's always a talk and showpiece that you're at the, the mayor's private residence, so that's always nice. But uh, no, I think they're gonna have to drag me out of there kicking and screaming, Liz. <laughs> well, you can take a pause no. and we'll take you back whenever yeah, you're ready. No. Oh, for I know. sure. No, this is the one time I wish we didn't have term limits. I have to admit that because you've done it. You've been incredible on the council. And well, we could thank you. Use Very you kind on. Of you, we could we could keep you on there for a long November, time. In November fourth, there was election day here in the city, it and was. there was five candidates that ran. And um, so to remind our residents, just to kind of recap the sure. November election, we had um, your seat and Susan Brooks' seat will be um, filmed by uh, a planning commissioner, David Bradley. And then, of course, a former city councilwoman, Barbara Ferraro, was, was elected back on. Correct. And then Ken Dida, uh, founder of the city, as well as incumbent, he um, won his seat back. So there you have the, the next council going forward, um, joining Eric um, Allegria and John Cruikshank. So there's your council. Sure. So give us a recap of the election, your thoughts on the um, whole You know, it was day. an interesting election. <clears throat> kind of being an election watcher for many years back, it, it seemed it was a very... Um, uh, lower key type election. Uh, David Bradley, you know, he he was out behind the scenes. He was the highest vote getter, over right. five thousand votes, which was a lot. And another interesting note is the vote separating first and third place. There were three seats. Was less than five hundred, so they were very very close there. But the candidates did a great job. Um, you know, not not too much uh, mudslinging and what have you. Mm -hmm. There, there were there were differing opinions on certain things, but it was a very well run campaign. Uh, I do want to thank the winners. I think the city uh, is in good hands going forward. I also want to congratulate the other two gentlemen, Dave Ebenezer and Steve Peristam, who didn't make it. Uh, it's always it's it's difficult to throw your hat into that arena. It's a lot of work. Um, so anyway, congratulations to them for running their campaigns right. and, and, the, and volunteering to serve the city. And the two of them, um, they didn't make the council, but they have both have been serving in, on the planning commission and have spent multiple, multiple positions. You know, volunteer hours. Um, Finance advisory all, committee, HOAs, the whole the whole nine yards. All right. And also special uh, congratulations to Ken Duddy. He's a founder and he just uh, had his 88th birthday. Some were saying he's over 90, he's only 88, but uh, He's just an amazing guy, city founder, and and like I've said before, he he, he bleeds RPV blue and green. Right? right, and often we talk about institutional knowledge when you know you have the two council members, Eric Allegria and John Cruikshank. We call them the newbies, but they've been on now serving, so they are they they've got their their rhythm going. Um, but then of course Barbara Ferraro had Ferraro has served before. Absolutely, so, um, she's you know, a former mayor too. So, so. she um, will have you know be able to get right up to speed, I would think, pretty quickly. I so, think so, and we're like I said, we're in good hands. John and Eric do a great job, uh, very conscientious, uh, always fully prepared. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy, and I've, as has Susan, offered uh, you know our services or the ability to talk right. on anything. During that transition period, I'm well, sure you'll be right there. Well, going down years if somebody needs an opinion <laughs> or something, on uh, or off the record. <laughs> good to know. Uh, also on election day, the residents um, defeated Measure B. That's right. Um, and um, which was the hospitality initiative, which would have been a nightmare if it passed, right? So yeah, talk you know, about that, that. that whole thing, and, and I don't want to belabor the point. Uh, you know, I, I actually did a couple of public service announcements about it and wrote several letters about it. And it, it was problematic because they were basically trying to unionize a group that didn't want it to be unionized. And that's the hotel workers and, and businesses in that arena with 50 or more employees. And... Uh, you know, the, the primary uh, target of that was Terranea, and they had offered in the past to have a, you know, secret ballot vote of all of their employees if they wanted to unionize, which is the way to do that. This was an outside group, came in, tried to cram it down. There was a, a whole host of, uh, you know, accusations and erroneous information and, and different, just 
the, the premise behind the whole thing was wrong. And I think the, the residents of RPV, as I always say, are very smart. And uh, they saw through it. And it was almost 80% of the, uh, the voters voted no. So uh, I 100% wholly endorsed that that was the right move. All right. Yeah. Well, so we're going to move on from the election. Uh, your last city council meeting, well, your official full council meeting that was on November 19th was action-packed. You had a four-hour-plus meeting. Big agenda. Lots on there. So I wanted you to kind of recap that meeting. And one of the things, I actually had the opportunity to recognize two what I call heroes among right. us. And that's something else I brought forward, being a former military individual. And you don't really realize um, how many and I call them heroes, that people have done different things in different branches of the service. And I got to recognize two gentlemen, and that, that was very special. And I got, uh, I don't want to take compliments, but a lot of people really, really enjoyed that program. And it's just shocking when you talk to all these people, people going back, I'm, we're going to recognize in the final meeting, and I insisted that we do this, a Seaview resident, 97-year-old, World War II veteran, uh, he's got a big story to tell. So all these people were very deserving. So we started off with that. The other thing we did was immediately we moved into the farewell for Doug Wilmore, uh, which which was bittersweet. He's he's very excited about a new venture in the private sector. He's getting out of the uh, the public arena, and uh, you know Doug Doug was with us almost five years, and and he was a very special individual. He took the city to the next level. Uh, he, was he was a fantastic city manager. He was, and, and he, he took some heat along the way, but he, his, his biggest, the thing that he did, he offered ideas and always thought outside the box and brought those forward, waited for the council to make a decision, and never second guessed what we did. He, he ran, he was a hard charger. Whatever we wanted to do, he hit it hard and did it fast. And mm -hmm. sometimes we had to tell him, take it slow. But now he was great, and we hated to see him go. We so, also we also approved the contract for Ara Moranian as the interim city manager, which is huge. Uh, Ara has been with us twenty plus years. He's the perfect person to act as an interim, and I guess maybe this will, uh, uh, you know, I'm going to put a little plug in for him. I think he'd be a great city manager. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, Ara is beloved and well loved universally. And my only comment to Ara was, well, be prepared because the city manager sometimes gets a target on their back. So. But that was exciting for R, and I think the city will be well served with him there. The other thing we did was uh, uh, approve the final phase of the AOPR cameras on the east side, which is huge. Uh, as you know, the automatic license plate readers has gone a long way to the entire peninsula in conjunction with the other cities is almost fully um, covered with respect to that. And it's gone a long way to improving our crime stats and, and hopefully discouraging uh, wrongdoers from coming onto the peninsula because words getting out you're going to get caught if you come into rpv so that's big touching on what you talked about which was the nccp the natural communities conservation plan we did approve that that was huge that's that's been in the works since 1996. we had a big hurrah from the land conservancy uh folks in the audience they've been waiting for this well it's it's not only that they were waiting for it, we've been waiting for it too because <laughs> really what it did it streamlined the permitting process not only for the city but for for residents and and those that that may have habitat on the property they'd like to develop so that that streamlining and the the uh the fact that you don't have to go through an elongated approval process was huge and and obviously this is very important to the conservancy because they're our contractor for the maintenance of the uh, of the preserve mm -hmm. and uh it's huge for them because it gives them direction and it locks certain things down so very very important um and and i'm proud to say that that was adopted unanimously and and it was very well received so it's big for the city uh the other big thing we did was zone two right. as you know in portuguese ben uh, we took that up in 14 that's been an issue for a long long time there's 31 residents then I won't get into all the weeds here, um, but the Monk's lawsuit, et cetera, 31 residents uh, have been prohibited basically from building on uh, what has been de deemed uh, stable enough land to build on, and others have built. So finally, I think that we, we made the right decision. The EIR, EIR validated uh, our decision, so congratulations to those individuals. And the other thing we did was um, we, we agreed, and we had already started on this, a, a, a comprehensive fuel modification plan, fire prevention plan. Uh, James O'Neill had done great work thus far, but it was completely and fully ratified at that point. We're working closely with the preserve because 
the preserve obviously in RPV alone is 1,400 plus acres. Uh, if we had a fire issue there, it could be catastrophic. So very, very aggressively dealing with that. So it was a big meeting. It was yeah. a long meeting, <laughs> a, lot, a lot going on there. Well, I appreciate that. You referenced the fact that during that meeting, of course, that um, our Moranian was um, named interim uh, city manager at the time. Wait, can I can I just correct you? Sure. I, I would like the term acting, acting. at this point because interim means he's probably leaving, and so, I'm not sure that's okay, the case. Okay, we'll, we'll call him acting. All right, <laughs> acting that's is good. good. We'll like yeah. that acting city manager. Yeah. And um, but along with him leaving, uh, not him leaving, with Doug Wilmore leaving, who he's replacing at the moment, we've the deputy city manager Gabby App, um, who we're going to miss. She's she's mm -hmm. left the city as of the first week of December. She's, she's taken a up, right. position in uh, Beverly Hills. Congratulations, Congratulations to her, her, right? Deputy right. City Manager. Yeah. Our finance director, Deborah Cullen, also stepped down. So there's a lot of changes in the upper management at City Hall. What are your thoughts on that and how that would impact city services? You know, that's always tough. I, I, I really hated to see Doug go, but he, he lasted much longer than the average city manager's tenure. You know, they roll every three or four years. He was almost with us five. And, and really, Doug's demeanor again. I I can't say enough about it. You know, he stood up when he needed to, but just the way he dealt with the council and did his job was terrific. And the other big thing I would say is the team he put together. That team at City Hall, especially at the senior level and even down to the rank and file levels, was stellar. Deborah Cullen, no one better than Deborah Cullen on the finance side. I really hated to see her go. She promised Doug two years. She was here almost four. The systems that they implemented, not only from a technology standpoint, but just the reporting and everything associated with us, she just did an outstanding job. Gabby, anything that goes on in the city, Gabby's got her hands in it one way or another. She was great, and just the demeanor and the professionalism was awesome. So it's always tough to see those people go, and even with their short tenures, with the four or five years each, um, there's institutional knowledge walking out the door. And we've got Ara, but Ara's filling three shoes at this point. We're bringing some other people in. I'm, I'm confident that we will, we will do well going forward. Deborah's replacement had worked with her for 20 years, so she's got the same demeanor and system, so that'll be good. Um, but, you know, we, we'll muddle through, and right. that's what you do. And the next city council pressure's on for them to... Pressure's um, on right away. ...select that, the next city manager, as you say, you know... You're hoping, supporting that that it'll become our right? I think so. And but I they're, think they're doing an open search right now. Open search. And there may be another qualified individual, and that's up to the, uh, you know, I kind of say that tongue-in-cheek, but I have the utmost respect for Ara. Um, but it is up to the next council. And if people don't know, the only two individuals that we really, as a council, uh, have authority over are the city manager and the city attorney. And right. that's it. So and until the next city manager selected, thus the deputy will have to be on hold as well as the finance right. director. So And the way they restructure and who mm -hmm. they hire and, you know, your, your recourse is really, you're, you're not supposed to get involved with the running the day-to-day -day of the city, councilmanic interference. Your recourse is to fire that individual if you don't like their job. So Right. Anyway. But you said for now, the city's in good hand, especially with Ara. He's mm -hmm. been around for more than... 20 deck, plus, yeah, yeah, 20 plus years. And um, okay, well, we'll stay tuned for that. Yep. Um, let's look back on 2019. This is our annual year in review show here on City Talk. Um, uh -huh. Just in general, are you satisfied with the state of the city and the quality of life here for all of us residents? You know, I'm so proud of, of the city of Rancho Palos Verdes. And, and when I say that, I'm talking about all the residents and all those that make city government happen the planning commission, all the various committees, all the involved residents that come and give us their, their input. Uh, the city, the state of the city is excellent across the board, everything from crime being down, financially, quality of life issues, infrastructure, all the big, big ticket items, everything from the trash being picked up on a daily basis in PV Drive South, you know, or you see graffiti. Do you ever see graffiti in RPV anymore? You know, yeah. that's another Doug Wilmore thing. He's the one who got the app. And basically, you see graffiti, you take a picture if you have the app, and it sends the coordinates, and that's gone in 24 hours. Those are things that a lot of people may take for granted, but they're huge. They're I know. Huge. My husband was very good about using that app. Whenever we would be hiking <laughs> down on the Trump Trail, if Absolutely. we saw anything on a post, photo, and then we'd be down the next day, gone. Yeah. It, yeah. it, it works. Well, you know, so funny. <laughs> I drive on PV Drive South when I leave to go to work and when I come back. And I always look to see the quality of the trash collection. It's so, you know, I'm yeah. kind of weird that way. But, yeah, no, everything, the city couldn't, couldn't be in better shape right now, in my humble opinion. That's good. And I played a small role in that. You've, so. you've done a lot for the city. <laughs> One of the top goals was public safety. You referenced with the ALPR cameras. Just describe more, if you can, 
when you reflect on this year, how the council's really, you know, done a lot to help, you know, help bring crime down and uh, meet that goal of reducing burglaries and things like yeah, that. Yeah, well, the council, in, in any council, I think if, you, if you're a council watcher in this city or any city, public safety is always job one. Infrastructure is job 1A. That's, those two go hand in hand. And, and this council and the prior council that I was on, we fully embraced uh, crime reduction, crime prevention, public safety on multiple fronts. And, you know, we implemented programs like the Ring Doorbell uh, subsidy. We've gone through, you know, we did it once. We were the first city to do that. Um, now we're in round four of subsidizing these people because that was, you know, unanimously hailed as a successful program, and, and we're continuing to do that. The AOPRs, we were the lead on that. We were the first city on the hill to bring that forward. We did all the due diligence. We did all the research. And again, with the city manager and uh, Councilwoman Brooks, uh, you know, we enlisted the other cities to participate. And now we have a just about fully covered hill here with the AOPRs again, which goes a long way uh, towards crime reduction. Um, you know, with respect to fire safety, uh, we were very, very aggressive on that. And as I mentioned earlier, we have a comprehensive strategy there. We just allocated in the last three meetings uh, you know, half a million, right? Half a million on top of the three hundred fifty thousand plus that was there before. So we take this very seriously. And the other thing, because the community must be reminded that here on the peninsula, we are in like a high, high, high hazard. The entire fire city of Rancho Palos Verdes is considered a very high fire hazard zone. And uh, you know, there was talk about insurance policies not being renewed because of that. And there was a little bit of that, and I'm not sure how much of that is is still going on, but. We, the, the biggest thing and the biggest mantra that came forward from this council early on in, in my tenure as mayor was, this can't be, uh, you know, once the rainy season is done, we're going to go down and do fuel mod. It's a year-round deal. Mm -hmm. you know, we have to attack it year-round because the mustard grass, the mustard was beautiful, and, you know, you got all these beautiful pictures, but as soon as that dries out, it's right. a massive fire hazard. The acacia that yes. we're removing. I was uh, up in the preserve with some city council members and the Palos Verdes Peninsula Land Conservancy staff as they were removing, you know, quite a bit of that. And, and so explosive. Explosive. It's kind of got a tar base on the inside. And as it goes, you remember when a, an ember can travel four or five miles and, you know, start a fire mm -hmm. far away from us. And the other thing we're looking at, too, is the fuel modification along the, the, the coastal arterials, which is good for two reasons. Number one, it gets rid of the fire danger. Number two, you, you really don't realize as time goes on how much of the view you lose along the drive if we don't stay on top of that. So right. that's, a, that's, a, that's a double winner there. So you're pleased where we're going in terms of public safety, the direction? Absolutely. Gets... And I, I think this council, everything I've heard, the, the new council members soon to be uh, sworn in and the two, and actually three incumbents that are there, fully embrace that. I think that that's not going to change. We're going to want to talk about other projects for 2019, public works and infrastructure. Um, what stands out for you and what you've been able to accomplish to sort of improve um, the infrastructure of the city? You know, several things. Um, somewhat controversial, we wound up buying all the street lights, pretty much all the street lights in the city from uh, Southern California Edison. Uh, we actually paid the electrical bills on all that, and we're converting all those to LED, and we've gotten a lot of compliments. Uh, a plethora, if you will, of compliments on this new lighting and how much nicer it is. We got a couple complaints and we were able to deal, you know, somebody said, oh, this lights, you know, LEDs are a little bit wider and brighter. Um, but we were able to do some shrouding and take care of that. So that was a big one there. Uh, you know, the streets that we deal with, our residential roads are tops in the state. Award-winning. Award-winning. And, you know, 88% of the city's roads are A or A+, plus, which is unheard of. Uh, infrastructure, we're moving um, uh, cautiously, but but uh, continually, kind of like the the slide itself. But I'm talking about Portuguese Bend. You know mm -hmm. that that's a big thing, and we've got some things coming up there. Uh, traffic has increased obviously since we've become a destination city. Uh, if you don't know, there's going to be a new street light at PV Drive South and PV Drive East. Uh, they're you champion also, that. I did, and and there's going to be some timing issues with uh, or things that need to be corrected, so we can basically platoon traffic. The other big thing there is on PV Drive South, right outside of Trump, very difficult 
uh, ingress and egress for, for people in the Ladera Linda neighborhood. So we're going to make some major modifications there. You'll see all that happen in 2020. And, and if we can just get the cars to platoon by controlling that, people will have a, a little easier ability to get out of and the neighborhood. And a personal note, you and I both live in this neighborhood that we're talking about off PV Drive South. Well, so we're in we'll Sea View. We're talking more about Ladera and Linda's house. I know, but we're a block problem. away. We are. We, I feel the, the impact's thing. trying to get out of the neighborhood. Absolutely, though. you do. So this yeah. will be good. And, uh, you know, those are probably the biggest things we have going on right now. Okay. A um, lot of talk all for years now um, about building a new civic center. Yes. A big project down the road. Where, yes. where are we at with that? Are you, what direction do you feel like you took um, as mayor with the council dealing with this? And there's been a well, This has been a long-standing project. I can't take uh, any, any unilateral credit for what transpired there. But, you know, we, we required that property uh, from the federal government as part of the federal lands to, to parks program and and uh, there was about 10 acres in question if anyone has actually looked at the city hall property it's a nice big property but it wasn't contiguous and there's city owned property and there was other property that is city owned but had deed restrictions on it and those deed restrictions have caused us uh, consternation over decades we've been trying literally believe it or not for 25 years to get those deed restrictions removed or modified mm -hmm. and that was one of the goals that uh, we set for Doug Wilmore we actually hired a lobbyist, Councilman uh, Crookshank, and uh, well, actually Mayor Pro Tem Crookshank now, and Councilwoman Brooks were on a subcommittee, uh, and I participated peripherally uh, in dealing with Washington and trying to get this done. And there were several starts and stops over the last three or four years, but very aggressively pursuing that. We finally had, um, we were going to do a legislative approach, and then we, we took a different tact, and the city manager made, I think, like eight eight or nine trips to D.C. really working on this. Uh, we did get those deed restrictions modified and the, the uh, formal approval from the agency. I signed that. That was a big signing. I actually took a, <laughs> took a lesson from John Hancock. There was a big <laughs> space, so I put a big signature on that one because that was, that, was that was a big bellwether day on that. Um, How exciting. It was very exciting. And, and, you know, we have, like I said, the 10 acres – <clears throat> we, we now have the ability to put public safety facilities on there, including, uh, you know, a sheriff's substation, a fire department, a new improved helipad. Maybe, you know, there'll be two landing pads there, emergency operations center, um, you know, and, and uh, those, are, those are big. Yeah, I mean, the, we've, there's been a civic center advisory committee, a lot of community input and meetings, and everyone's been talking about this for years, but until the deed restrictions got lifted, which has happened under your watch this year, it, did. it really wouldn't have it mattered until we couldn't it build would, the project. It, it, it would have been disheveled, and it would have been haphazard, and it would not have been the way to go. And, and this really does free up quite a bit of space because we couldn't do anything with the property before. It was for passive use only. Now we can use mm -hmm. that for public safety, which does free up the map, and it allows us to, to move some things around you know, to, to get contiguous space. And basically what I'm talking about is, you know, it's uh, the way the lines were drawn, it would have been tough to deal with. So whether or not that civic center actually gets built, that's a whole other thing. Whether it's phased, that'll be for this new council to deal All with. Right. Did so. you personally believe, think the city needs a new civic center? You know, I think we need to do, I think we need to do some things, you know, there, there's, and I don't want to go down this road right now, yeah. but there was, you know, things about in the, in the, uh, the civic center uh, advisory committee, worked with Gensler, who was the architect, and they came up with a, a, actually they even did a model, but they did a plan of here's what it could look like. It wasn't the Taj Mahal. It <laughs> wasn't the Taj Mahal, but this, it, was, it was conceptual, and we were going to actually, we, we approved an RFP to go out and get the designs, but, you know, in their design, say, oh, you can have a cafe for that cafe. got so much attention, mm -hmm. and, and it was unnecessary because it was conceptual and had nothing to do with being approved, so. Right. Well, the, the new council will have its hands full on that. There'll be much more public outreach on the topic, um, and 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 I think we're we're due for for something there. I'm not sure we do it all in one fell swoop. Financing will be an issue, um, so we'll see. We'll right. see. But we, we we took care of step one right now. I know we're talking about uh, zone two or earlier. We're going to move on. The Portuguese Bend landslide is something we talk about. We hear about up. At, you know, the council is talking about it all the time. The community. You know, what's going to happen? How are we ever going to fix this? What's the solution? Do you think we're moving closer? You know, there, there, the solution is this, Liz. It, and it, it is. I think the bottom line is to slow it down. You know, the the question on on 
whether or not it will ever be stopped. And I talked to very, very smart individuals on the topic, um, you know, Bob Douglas, Perry Elig, all these different people. And I said, you know, off the record, can we ever get this thing stopped? And, you know, they kind of looked at me. And this was actually during a, a workshop that I insisted we had. This was probably four or five years ago on Portuguese ban before Councilman Dida was on the council and really championed it and took that banner and ran with it. And, and I sat with him on the subcommittee, but he's really the champion of this going on right now. But the, the answer I got from the, the, all the engineers that were there, and it was a very astute group, they basically said, well, all you got to do is wait about 250 years and it'll stop itself. And I just said, you know what? I, I get that, but, but that's not an answer that we can accept because right. we're at the time we were spending over a million bucks a year doing the road. And there's some of those that argue that, hey, maybe you should just continue spending that million a year. But the, the real issue is if we have a catastrophic failure of PV Drive South, think about what that would do. You know how long it would take to come around the backside of the hill and, mm -hmm. and traverse and get to Terranea? Terranea would die. Residents, it, you'd have a major uh, thoroughfare gone. So we can't lose PV Drive South. That's really the biggest thing. So. Uh, getting back to how we fix Portuguese Bend, we need to slow it down. We, we've hired very high-end engineers that have done this on a massive scale and at other locations. And this council has directed uh, that group to come up with a plan to move slowly but methodically, kind of like the slide itself. Mm -hmm. We're going we're gonna to do some hydro augers, parallel, uh, get the water out of the whole Ishibashi you know, swamp. When it rains there, that fills up. And if you ever, it's, it's, there's several people, Lowell Wiedemeyer, who was on that committee, you know, he shows videotape when that thing has three or four feet of water and that gets absorbed in the ground very, very quickly. And water is what's making the right. land move. We got to get the water out, dewatering wells, uh, uh, um, getting new new pipes underneath PV Drive South, getting the water to the ocean. So, But we're going to do it methodically and we're going to do it, um, you know, um, in phases. So again, another... Many big decisions for the new council on that front. Well, we've been discussing this for over 50 years. So. At least, yeah. yeah. All right. One thing um, that we all like to talk about, that parks make life better here. And yeah, so they I'm going to move do. on talking about what's happened with the Wreck and Parks this year in 2019. Um, just sort of how the council, you feel like that the, that the parks have continued to thrive and improve in the community. And it's so important to offer the community recreational programs. Well, we're really, if you think about it, we're the only city on the peninsula that has all the parks. And our parks are spectacular. Most of them have view components. They're very well maintained. Um, the, you know, the, uh, the preserve is not a park, but it, it, is, a, it is another venue for uh, passive recreation. Uh, but our city and our, our uh, Rec and Parks Department do an outstanding job. If I read the administrative report. And by the way, anyone who's interested on what the heck's going on in the city should read that administrative report. It comes out every Wednesday. It's online. It talks about everything that's done. And there's a section in there that talks about Rec and Parks. And all the activities it's from... so much happening. You know, the REACH program, the... You know... Uh, the, the, the Easter egg on all these things is it's there's a list of five or six things on a regular basis that I don't think most people know that goes on and that are offered in the city. And there's always a couple hundred kids, two to three hundred kids attend. This is great stuff. And and not only do we have the facilities, but we have the programming. So hats off to that whole group there. And, you know, we, we just went through a Ladera Linda master plan, which is huge. And that's going to be a community center there. I think it's right size now. And this new council has things to talk about, like how we're going to finance it, et cetera, et cetera. But we've we've approved a design going forward. Uh, Lower Hess Park has been significantly improved under our watch also. If you really think about where that was, look at pictures before and after. Now they're putting some shade structures down there. Uh, we're redoing the turf at up at Upper Hess because it's tough to maintain. That's another half million dollars there. You know, again, the Civic Center complex, one of the phases might be just to improve the parkland of this area that we're in right now and the open space and the green space. And um, so lots of good things going on in that arena. We are clearly a destination and people come and enjoy our parks. And, you know, I mean, I live across the street from Marilyn Ryan, right. like you, you see how many people, that's a very small pocket park and those people love it. They were throwing Frisbees with their kids. It's great. Do so. you have a favorite park or spot? Because you grew up in RPV as I well. I did. You've been here since the fifth uh, grade. You know, a favorite park. Hmm. Um, huh, that's a tough Could one. Could be a favorite hike or... Yeah, well, you know, I, I kind of like ocean trails. I yeah. like that whole, you know, we live there and yeah. that's that's 
the, the hiking is fantastic there, and, and Marilyn Ryan. Um, you know, Ladera Linda has a lot of great memories for us, too. We actually had several of my young kids' parties up there. There's soccer games up on the upper fields that really aren't part of Ladera right. Linda, but they've been uh, incorporated up there. And, and obviously, Hess is a showpiece, and Ryan has a lot going of on. Of course. So. Yeah. In fact, Ryan Park right now, there's a mural project in the works. So That's you have to I stay hear. tuned for that. It's going to yeah. be a beautiful display of the uh, mural of the PV butterfly. So yeah, I'd have to say my kids, it was like going to Ship Park, which yeah. is Ryan Park. Yeah. Or, but really? yeah, no. Uh, we always we always enjoyed the Darren Linda, even though it was a little in the, the dilapidated side. But you know, the basketball courts and the, the grass area, and it was close. So. Mm -hmm. Anyway. A lot of great choices. Big stuff coming up there. As we sort of get close to having to wrap up here, um, for starters, you know, uh, over this year, I mean, you as mayor, there's so many, so besides the council meetings, you're at so many different events and ribbon cuttings. And of course, very exciting when uh, the president of the United States, Donald Trump, was here and you were, That's right. went to, got to go to the dinner when the night he was here on a, on a special visit. So share some of the highlights, including if you want to take us down memory lane. Yeah, I'm um, kind of going to do that via calendar. There, there, there's, <laughs> okay. there's, there, there's so many different things, Liz. You know, first it started off, uh, you know, we had Whale of a Day. That's one of my favorite things. And, you know, the, the Fernell lens was, was a big right. deal. All the new exhibits down there. There was big fanfare there. We had the Coast Guard there in force. Uh, that was huge. So I really, really enjoyed that. And there was, you know, I had the big scissors and the ribbon cutting. Yeah. You're talking about. That was fun. And for the viewers watching, you have to go to the Point Vicente Interpretive Center to check out the lens, which it came from the lighthouse. So, so they yeah, know what's Point going Vicente on. Lighthouse. Yeah, but that was special that you got to. Uh, it was very, very special, and it was an educational thing. And you really don't realize, you know, how ahead of that that hundred year old lamp put out, you know, light twenty five miles out to sea. It's kind of crazy, and it had to do all with the crystal placement. But right. anyway, go check it out at PVIC. Right. So that was all whale of a day, the festival of the the whales, and you were there as mayor, and that was fun. Absolutely, and then then the other thing that comes to mind is Memorial Day. That's always very poignant at Green Hills, and and uh, I got to give an address in fourteen when I was mayor, and this year too. So that that makes it that much more special uh, for me. I was able to convey some thoughts and some words, and, and that's always, again, um, you know, we, we have to remember those that have served and that are and, and have passed and those that continue to serve. Because, yeah. you know, I, I think every day when you look at the chaos around the world and it's in our face with, you know, social media, how lucky we are to be in the United States of America. That doesn't doesn't get lost on me. And yeah. as you, before you continue, and I want to thank you for your service because you were uh, serving the Air Force and you you are one of the heroes among us, just so you know. Oh, well, I wouldn't go that far. You but are. I, I think I did my part, and I, I think everyone who serves does their part in one way, shape, or form. And, and, you know, the military is an outstanding group of individuals, by and large, usually, mm -hmm. you know, creme de la creme. But it was special. You got to be up there and give... give it was very, the, very special. The, the and and, and I, I actually, it forced me... It, it was it was a cathartic exercise for me because I really dwelled on that for I had like four minutes and I wanted to impart some words of wisdom and I, I dwelled on it for about two weeks and it made me do a lot of thinking and as you know I've lost more friends than I can imagine in the service of this country both in combat and training for combat uh, so it's very personal to me mm -hmm. um, and, and personal to a lot of people. All you got to go is attend that event, and you'll see how personal it is. And you you have. You're there yes. every time I'm there, too. So um, moving along, there was the 4th of July. That's always fun. And that's, that's a, you know, I think that's our big country picnic up there. And that's fun. And the music and the dancing and the kids and stuff. And it's just a good, gorgeous day this year. Couldn't have been any nicer. Got to mingle with a lot of people. So that was very memorable. Um you know, moving on, meeting the president, you know, we, we live right across the street from Trump. So we saw all the preparation. We saw everything that went on that. And, and the whole uh, uh, methodology and apparatus of bringing a president of the United States is so impressive. Mm -hmm. uh, let alone during that night, I had probably five different opportunities to have very short snippets with him. Uh, and again, you know, I would say it doesn't matter really what side of the aisle. Not too many people get to meet the president. Right. And, and in that intimate of a setting, I think there was, you know, 150 people there. And he was very cordial, didn't talk politics, just very nice, very affable, took pictures. And 
uh, you know, to see all the Secret Service around, like I said, it was an impressive show. Yeah, so. that was, it was pretty special. I was there filming for our PBTV, and again, like you said, it doesn't matter what your politics are, it's just to have that opportunity to have a president come to RPV and also to have Trump National in our community. Absolutely. It's huge. And, and that staff down there, they do a great job, and unfortunately, I think they take some heat. You know, I've had people tell me, well, I don't go there anymore because I don't like the president. Well, you know what? Yeah, it's that, that's unfortunate. That's all I'm going to say about that. I'm not going to begrudge people. The other thing, Liz, one thing that comes to mind, too, that stuck out for me was the um, community leaders breakfast. That was something that, that we resurrected this year, and that was, that was universally uh, extremely well received. We got a lot of compliments on that. And again, I take very little credit. I was one piece of it, but I was the mayor, and I kind of emceed it. Um, and hopefully that continues, but that brought together leaders in the community from multiple areas. Uh, they got debriefed on everything that went on in a semi-casual environment. So, and it was a nice give and take there. It was really, really nice. And again, universally well received. A uh, couple other things that I enjoy, you know, you talk about being a mayor. I, had a, I get a mayor's breakfast. I get to run a meeting uh, the last Friday of every month uh, with the heads of the various committees and commission. Um, we only have one, the Planning Commission, um, and we share input, and I give a debrief, and then we get all that input there, and it's, it's, it's a brain trust of very, very dedicated people, um, and that, that always, I just, I relish that, and I enjoy the interchange, and you learn a lot, and I think they learn a lot, and those are the future leaders, too, hopefully, mm -hmm. you know, some of them, David Bradley was on the Planning Commission, he's now on the council, yes. or will be shortly, and the other thing, the memorable things, Liz, was uh, all the different HOA meetings. Those are those are important to me because you get in front of, you know, forty residents or two hundred residents, whatever it is, and and it is uh, the way I always dealt with it. I gave opening remarks and I talk about whatever you know. I ask in advance anything particular you want to talk about. And then you open up for Q and A, and those Q and As last a long time because most of the time they don't they don't get to talk face to face to the one of the decision makers or policy makers. And get very candid answers. So that I really enjoyed that. So those are probably some of my highlights over the year. Right. Yeah. And then to look at the big picture of eight years, you you, you were sworn into this to the city council in 2011. 2011. In December of 2011. Right yeah. Here we are in 2019. And if you look back to like when you think about the issues then, like why you decided to run and what, mm -hmm. what's going on now, like what what. Can you share with us when you compare back then to now? Yeah, you know, thinking about it, one of the biggest things, it was an infrastructure issue. If you remember San Ramon, and that was probably the first two and a half years on council, that was the biggest thing going on in the city. We wound up, I think, making the right decision and getting that ultimately built, and we had a big uh, grand opening mm -hmm. over there. Huge project. Also, if you remember, Liz, you reflect back, crime was a massive issue back then. Um, the prior council, prior to the, you know, this, this new council here, not so new now, uh, we dedicated millions of dollars to dealing with crime. And, and, you know, I just, again, I've said it before, my heart goes out to those people who, who the word is violated. Your house is robbed, whether you're there or not, you feel violated. And that's, and, and the numbers are still, you know, if you think about it, a respectable year would be under 80 burglaries in RPV. Think about that number. That's 80 families that, mm -hmm. that have had this stressful, potentially dangerous scenario uh, that they have to live with. So the council understood that, and we we hit that hard. We we spent millions of dollars over the last several years, multi-millions of dollars. Yeah. You put added patrol addressing cars, that, added, added patrol, staff, all SAT of that. detectives, this, PV Drive South, and... Traffic, you know, you think about we had a big motorcycle problem. So, you know, that was a big issue back then. Um, the other thing that kind of struck me, and I, I wasn't really going to bring this up, but when I first got on council, that was different. There was a massive distrust of City Hall back then. It was it was rampant. Some of it was, was accurate to certain degrees, and a lot of it was not. And I spent the first two or three years uh, on council working with other council members and members of the public going in, getting your hands dirty, nothing to do with council meetings, going in and sitting with staff two, three hours on a Thursday night and say, show me the books on this, show me how you do that, what's the check and balance here, this, that, and the other. And the good news was, after we went through that exercise, it was like, you know what? They have a pretty good handle on this. We have I'm a happy great to, staff at City Hall. Happy to report that, you know, things there are not as chaotic. And, you know, some people use that for political purposes, and that's unfortunate. 
Nobody's perfect. Everybody has room for improvement, including our staff, but that was a big thing back then. Um, we did the rules of procedure. We implemented what we call the CBA, which is the, the uh, compensation and benefits analysis of, of all staff. We are the most transparent city across the board, bar none. And I would, I would say in California for sure, maybe, maybe nationwide, we do more to let the people know and, and have a look into the behind the scenes financially, what goes on there than anybody else, you know. And the other one last thing I have to say too <laughs> is, is back then, if you remember too, the dog park was a big issue. And, <laughs> and, and, and uh, it's so funny, I rolled in here tonight to the Civic Center Complex, there's about six dogs in there in the dark with their, peep, their, their uh, owners yeah. over there. And I was the one who said, and a lot of people take credit for this, but I know because I went back and looked at the meeting when everyone was taking credit for this, was, well, why don't we try a temporary dog park? And that temporary, Carolyn Petrie ran with that. And that dog park's still here today. And now we have another dog park at Eastview. Those, we get more compliments on those two dog parks than, than a lot of other things. I forgot to mention that in the park right, discussion right. we had earlier. So anyway, so, yeah, well, I digress. <laughs> though that, that, there's always plenty. Of there. It's busy over there. Busy tonight. There were six dogs and I rolled in. It was dark. And is it still a temporary dog park? Are we still calling uh, I it think temporary? It's, you know, Technically? I don't think we are. I think, <laughs> I, well, it's temporary because it may be moved, but it's a, let's call it the successful dog park. It, yeah, you know? it's, 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 yeah, there's a lot going on there. There's, and there's a community, too. You know, there's a, even there's a mayor a of the dog park to, to have competition view. But Absolutely. The, they have someone where they call the mayor of the dog park. I've met several I've, people there myself over yeah. the years um you just talked about a lot of highlights i'm just thinking at all i mean when you look back on all the votes that you probably you've made as a councilman and mm. mayor is there one vote that you can share that you look at and you think wow i was able to really make a difference i want to be remembered for this like i don't know is there something that stands out it could be something we already said you know the, the three biggest ones obviously actually maybe four san ramon was big uh, i supported that Finally approving the general plan was huge. Yeah. That was that was another decades long endeavor that had hundreds, if not thousands, of RPV residents input into that project. Uh, we finally approved that. The NCCP HCP was huge. Um, you know, uh, zone two and that. You know, those two big ones, like right at the tail end of, of my tenure there, those were big. But some of the things you talk about, what I remember, what, what I hope I'm remembered for, not a vote per se. There was a lot of votes and, and, you know, we do the best we can, whether you agreed with me or not in the public. I, you know, I always said, the, I just had some comments the other day. Uh, you know, my father always said, do the right thing and the rest will take care of itself. So that's what I always tried to do. Mm -hmm. I always tried to be respectful with people. Uh, the other guiding principles was do no harm, you know. And, and leave whatever you were working on, in this case, the city, better than when you started. Um, and I think that that, I think we did all that. The other, you know, one of the things I really do and one of my mantras when I first ran was run the city more like a business in a business-like uh, manner. And I think that's really permeated. I think we kind of got away from a lot of the legalistic uh, uh, municipality and we really kind of made business people decisions there, business person decisions. Um, Another thing I'd like to think from, that, that I brought forward was some sort of succinctness. People like the way I'm kind of crisp with my meetings. They, <laughs> they always comment on that. Yes. Uh, you run an efficient meeting. And I, and I think uh, hopefully I'll be remembered for some fairness um, and respect. You know, even in when you, you get blasted every now and then on council mm -hmm. and maybe, you know, others would have lashed out. But you, you respect that. You respect your role and your position that, that there's a time and place for that. But anyway. So I, I had written down because you would, I, there's been a lot of parties celebrating what you and also Susan Brooks is going to be off the council as well. Oh, that's right. We were at uh, Trump National. There was a get together with the community just right. recently and that was fun. And you mentioned that your dad said, do the right thing. So I want to know what is the next right thing for you, Jerry? What's happening next? Anything uh, bigger in your political future? I've heard a lot of people saying that they hope you run for Congress. You know, it's funny you say that. I've had <laughs> a lot of people really, uh, I think, seriously broach that topic with me. Um, it's funny, I, I, I've had those discussions with my wife. I think I would relish that job. I mm -hmm. think I would do well in that job. Uh, at this point in time, she's not too up for it. And, you know, the, it's a family decision to go down that road. So we'll see what happens. I'm, uh, I'm going to take a little bit of a breather right now. I have some things and uh, 
things to make up to my family. Well, you have a beautiful wife, Ro, and I'm going to use this this time to segue to talk about her and your uh, Gina and Anna, your other, you have, you have three beautiful ladies in your house. That's and, right. um, you know, we've been blessed to have them as well as you here as part of our RPV family, your whole Dehovic family. We love you all. And oh, especially, you. you know, and you're a big family with, yeah. you know, your sisters and your mom, and we get to get to be with all of you. And so I don't know if there's anything you want to say, like, to them as they are <sighs> obviously watching. And we yeah. want to thank Gene and Anna, too. They've interned and helped with the studio, which has been great. Well, we thank hope you for welcoming and embracing them on that. They'll still be here with us. They will be, and Anna's looking forward to getting more, <laughs> more involved. But, yeah, it's, it, 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 it was definitely a family affair in the Dehovic family. Even the decision, even my daughters were so young back then, and we sat down and had a family meeting. You know, Daddy's thinking about doing this, and, uh, you know, whether my wife was on board, and she fully embraced it early on. I think not knowing how much work it really entailed if you yeah. did the job right. Um, but there are, there are clearly sacrifices that were made, and there are certain things uh, that, that uh, I, I missed, unfortunately. Uh, but but I'll, I'll take that a step further. Whatever we lost, I think we gained multiple fold, including everything from my daughters, seeing how how things are done and how people step forward to improve the community. We had many people in and out of my house and very, very smart people. And you, you, you learn by osmosis, too. You can't help but hear. I followed what my dad did. My dad was very involved in everything locally and internationally in the Croatian independence movement, all these things. So you can't help but learn. Mm -hmm. And both my daughters were very involved in... in uh, um, you know, their, their school government and, and student councils. And my, my youngest, you know, after 16 years, she was the first female president of her school. So, it, you know, my comment to them would be, I'm sorry for the things I missed, but I think you're, <laughs> I think you're much better off. Uh, to my wife, the same thing. I'm sorry, honey, for being a little out of pocket. She, uh, she's looking forward to the day when I'm not up at 4 or 5 in the morning reading my binders and, yeah. you know, we could share a coffee. But I also want to say thank you very much. It was a family affair. I love you all very much. Um, couldn't have done it without you. My wife is, you know, she is, she's my confidant, my, my best political strategist. And, uh, uh, you know, things, things are, you know, there's ups and downs along the way, and she was there for all of it. So thank you so much, honey. Love you. Yeah, we, we yeah. love your family. Waiting for Thumb to give you the, Ro to give you the thumbs up for yeah. uh, <laughs> For well, we'll Congress see. I, you know, day. she gave me an earful the other day. I'm not sure how I mean, she is for it. We'll see. So, all right. So now before we have to wrap up our show, anything else you want to say to the community? Yes, Liz, thank you. I just want to say, as I've said hundreds of times, serving on the council in Rancho Palos Verdes has been an honor and a privilege and my pleasure. I want to say thank you to all the residents uh, for your support, your concern, your involvement. We have a wonderful community. Uh, again, it's been my honor and privilege to interact with all of you out there. So thank you very much for me and my family. And thank you. It's been an honor and privilege to have you here in our studio, to have you as our mayor and our council, and I look forward to seeing you in the neighborhood. Absolutely. All right, that's going to do it for this edition of RPV City Talk. I'm Liz Brown Swanson. Thanks for watching, and happy holidays.